Is that your position? Yeah. Okay, I think. <laughs> yeah. We good? Okay. Hello. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, I'm Marcus, and I'm going to talk about Vagrant. I hope you're all here for a Vagrant talk. If not, uh, enjoy. <laughs> Vagrant is a tool for developers. Um, it's to build virtual machines. Quick question, who here uses VMs at the moment? Okay, and Vagrant? A couple of Vagrant users? Great. It's all about automation. You've probably all been here at some point. Someone comes along, joins your project. First thing they do is show you, show them where the loo is, where the cafe is, where to get good coffee, you get their ID card, you give them a laptop, and say, here you go, Chook. these are the instructions. And then they spend the next day or two installing Apache, getting MySQL configured, uh, maybe you've got a varnish set up. Uh, so all of these things take a long time to manually configure. So we'd rather someone comes along, joins a project, gets their laptop and spends the next 10 minutes or so installing everything automatically uh, and offhand. So you need VirtualBox, it's actually alive. Technically you don't need VirtualBox anymore, but that changed a month ago, so barely current. Um, so imagine you do need VirtualBox. You definitely need Vagrant. And I'm not going to tell you how to install them because they're very simple. You download them, double click, and it says install, and you say OK and follow the instructions. This is about setting up the box. So first thing you need, need to do is you need to add a Vagrant box. Uh, what's a box? I will tell you a little bit about that in a bit. So that's the command you type there. You type vagrant box add, and you give it a name, and the URL. So that URL is a vagrant box that's distributed by Canonical from Ubuntu. Once you've got the box, you do vagrant init and vagrant up, and you're kind of done. That's it. That is all of the instructions. So I took some screenshots. They do get bigger. When you do vagrant box add, it goes off and starts downloading uh, the URL that you've given it. That is 385, so normally between 350 to 500 megs. Um, so if you're going to do this a lot, you might want to mirror the boxes locally. So instead of swamping your internet connection, you can swamp your local network connection. When you add the box, it's done with the download and it's stored that locally on your machine. Once you've added the box, that's it. You never need to add that box again. You create the VM by, uh, I normally do everything in a working directory, so I've got home slash development, which is where all my dev takes place. I create a directory for the project I'm about to work on. I go into it, and I type vagrant in it, and that name there is whatever name you happen to have given it in the previous command. So you can call it anything you want. Um, it's a good idea to give it a name that indicates what box it came from. When you do that, it does one simple thing. It puts a file called vagrant file in your current working directory. Takes a second. You then type vagrant up. And what that does, it starts going through, it says importing base box, matching that, blah, blah, blah. What it's doing is setting up a virtual machine for you. Once you've done that, you can set up your project environment. So you might SSH to the machine and you get a shortcut. If you're within the Vagrant uh, directory and you type Vagrant SSH, that will automatically get you into the virtual machine you've just created. So you don't need any SSH keys, you don't need a user ID, <laughs> that'll put you straight in. And then if you were developing normally, you would type in yum install or apt get install, and then a really, really, really long list of things that you want on your box. That's maybe got three or four things that I wouldn't normally install that are dev specific. I think it's got GCC in there and make, but um, that is basically the setup for a good start to a development environment. And you will then wait for everything to be installed and downloaded from apps. So again, if you can run app mirrors or run a squid cache, you're going to save yourself a lot of bandwidth. And then you can SSH to your machine, and you might make a directory, showing it to Vagrant, clone your project, make a vhost, set up a MySQL user, etc., 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 etc. It's all very time-consuming, tedious typing. So let's not do manual setup. 
there are two ways, two main ways you can use Vagrant. I tend to use a magic box because I like that, or you can use a standard Vagrant config. So first of all, we're going to show you how to set up with a customized box. Um, that's not quite the correct URL. I'm going to give you a better URL at the end. Uh, so you make your directory, you go into it, you vagrant in it with the, the box name that you've just added, and you vagrant up. And if you were to follow that with the box I've just shown you, you will see that it would already have Drush, MySQL with a database added, a Drupal site, and so on. So that means with five steps, you've gone from nothing to having a complete project environment. I think that's pretty good. The other way you can do it is, again, you start off with a directory that you want to work in, and you git clone something. This something is a vagrant config. And you'll see there, it usually has two things, a vagrant file, uh, absolutely has to be there for vagrant to work, and you might have a puppet manifest or a chef manifest that automates the installation process. So this time, when you vagrant up, then it goes through, I'm going to screenshots for this, it goes through and installs all of the things, and if you vagrant SSH and you verify it, uh, you've got four steps, and again, you have a machine ready and raring to go. So a couple of minutes later, you can have everything built. So VirtualBox is the software that runs the VMs. VMware Fusion also works with uh, Vagrant just about now. That's a really recent commit. Vagrant can also control Amazon instances and so on. But historically, it's only ever worked with VirtualBox. So that's what we tend to work, uh, talk about. Um, host is, for example, your laptop. And guest is the VM that's running within that. Uh, we talk a little bit about <coughs> disk mounts. Most people want to use an IDE on their laptop, um, or at least have a way of accessing the files within the VM. And so you can either disk mount those, uh, uh, your project basically, either through NFS, or through the native mounter system, or through Samba. And the Vagrant documentation tells you uh, about the different ways and how to set that up. Um, going back to Box and Basebox, the base box is basically a, a template for a virtual machine. You can't start a base box itself, but a base box is a set of instructions to Vagrant on what needs to be installed into your VM. And the Vagrant file contains those instructions. So you might use Ubuntu. You might find that all of your production machines are Red Hat, in which case you might want to use CentOS for, for your box. You could use Debian, you could use Slackware, 3264. When you add a Vagrant file, Vagrant init will give you a very simple template, and the only thing it changes within that template is the um, name of the box that you're referencing. Within that template, you can change all sorts of things. Uh, so when you configure it, that's where the docs are, you get something like, wow, it's actually readable. The first time I've got um, code on screen that people can read. Uh, it's actually Ruby. All of Vagrant is built in Ruby. So um, it's fairly simple, even if you don't program Ruby, to get what it's doing. I've given it a box name. I've given it a host name. I've added a new network adapter. And all of this section here is about configuring Puppet. So I'll tell you a little bit about that in a bit. Um, so if we were to talk about this magic box, and I've got a URL for the one that I'm using shortly. I start with getting a standard Vagrant build. Uh, I used Ubuntu. I tweaked the Vagrant file and added the puppet config. So that is literally what I, uh, what I entered for my Vagrant file. And then I used a special packaging script that took the Puppet manifests, the Puppet modules, the Vagrant file, and the original base box that I built, and merged them all together into one box. And so that means that with one box, you get absolutely everything someone needs. That gives you one command to, uh, to start up a new instance. 
So if you were to look inside the box, and this is looking at the insides of what Vagrant has stored, every single Vagrant, um, Vagrant box, remember the box is the template, it gives you a VMDK. A VMDK is a virtual standard. It's a sort of standard for virtual disks that is used by VMware, by VirtualBox, by Microsoft's hypervisor. Um, so every single one will give you a, a virtual disk that is essentially what you get at the start of the base box. The OVF is VirtualBox specific, and that says uh, it tells VirtualBox how much RAM to assign to the machine. Uh, how much disk space, whether or not the disk should grow, the uh, network adapters, and so on. It's also packaged to all of this stuff into the includes. So that second vagrant file there, that's the one that I wrote, and it's got all of the puppet scripts. So it is basically identical to a standard vagrant config. If you use a standard vagrant config, it's simple to see. Everyone can see it. Everyone does things that way. Um, so you can have it under Git, you can diff changes, uh, you don't need any special packaging. Um, if you do this magic packaging system, then it means that it's a little bit quicker to get set up, and it means that if you're working with junior developers, then you hide all of the magic out of the way. So it means it's a very simple file structure, and it also means that it's something that's very hard to break because you can only edit it by editing a hidden directory in your uh, home directory. Um, if you were to package everything um, but leave the puppet manifests out there, then you get a very small base box, so more like 350 meg. But it means that when you do vagrant up, it connects to the, uh, it looks up the puppet manifest and follows the instructions. So when it does uh, in install Apache, it's basically typing in the command sudo apt get install Apache and downloads that from uh, Ubuntu. And then it downloads MySQL and maybe Drush. So you end up with A, a dependency on having internet access, and B, you end up with a dependency on having all of those sites up. So if one of the apt mirrors goes down, then maybe your install won't work, or if Drupal.org goes down, you might not get Drush. But on the plus side, it always gets the latest version of the package. If you package everything with this magic packaging script, your base box is bigger, but it means if you're on a train and you want to start a new VM, you can do it like that without having to get internet access. But it means that when you build it, that's the time frame where your packages are frozen. So if they update afterwards, then they'll be out of date. I will cover this very briefly. Why would you create a base box? If you follow the instructions of Puffet and Chef, you're still left with something someone else built. Okay, this base box is your template, and it contains some SSH keys and some um, vagrant specific things, but it's not something you've built. It's maybe not something you trust, uh, and maybe it's not the um, source OS you want. I don't know, does anyone run OS, Slackware? It was the first, uh, first Linux I ever tried. I decided never to ever use it again. Mm -hmm. A lot of manual configuration. Um, <coughs> uh, if you do decide to create a base box, you create your virtual machine in VirtualBox like everyone else does. Uh, Vagrant gives you a set of community standards for um, what you should do with a, a, a Vagrant image. It says that you should assign 512 meg RAM because this is a distributable um, virtual machine, and you don't want to start handing around something that requires two gig of RAM and isn't going to work on everyone's machine. So there's a set of community standards. Unless you have something really extraordinary, then uh, you should probably follow those. Uh, and you do need to do several vagrant specific things. Um, so once you've installed a plain old Ubuntu um, box, so you can install it from the CD-ROM or from an ISO, then you need to add a Vagrant user, you need to add some SSH keys, um, and that website will tell you exactly what you need to do. VWE is a very recent tool that automates all of the building of base boxes too. So actually, if you search around for instructions on building base box, you will find a load of websites which tell you how to do it manually, step by step. Install Ubuntu, add this, add that, don't do that. Just get VWE and... Uh, we will build it all automatically. <clears throat>
when I went to look, vagrantbox.es is kind of where a site I trust. It's got a list of 88 or so uh, VMs at the moment. Except some of them are maybe more trusted than others. So the ones at the top are from Ergon Logic, who is part of the Drupal community and is very active. He's a Ergon maintainer. So I would trust those ones. But the ones that are coming from a Dropbox that I don't, I'm probably a little bit less sure about those ones. <laughs> Um, because it's just a template, right? You have no idea what's in there. Uh, Puppet Labs do some, uh, and Ubuntu uh, Canonical have some uh, Ubuntu specific ones. They basically do the same thing. Puppet and Chef are both Ruby DSLs, it's the main specific language. They install packages, create users, manage config. They both have active open source community. Um, if you look at my examples, I use Puppet. And the way I chose it was looking at these questions. If you're working on a project and you've got a DevOps team and they tell you that they do everything with Chef, you should probably start doing things with Chef and take advantage of the knowledge that you've got within your project. Um, if you're using some of the Drupal tools, there are some open source Drupal uh, projects which package uh, Vagrant with Chef and others which package them with Puppet. So choose whichever one you feel like, but once you've chosen one, you are essentially stuck with, uh, with that choice. Um, both uh, Puppet and Chef have uh, a good sort of open source community um, process where you can get paid support from the likes of Puppet Labs, or there's community support in IRC and Hash Puppet and so on. So I wanted to say uh, a, a few of the resources. All of the test bots on Drupal.org are built with Puppet, and um, the Puppet manifests are in that project. Uh, the base box that I'm using for this talk, uh, and we'll press for time, but I'll see if I can get a live demo in at the end, is on that URL. And Project Oscar is kind of the same thing that I started building <coughs> a year or two ago. Um, but the base box that I built for this talk is probably a bit better than Oscar, so I think a lot of that is going to be updated soon. Mark Sonneban wrote Megalodon. Um, the, the Megalodon scripts are essentially to set up a MacBook as a development environment. And it's nothing to do with VMs, it just installs the database and Apache and so on. But it is a standard chef script that you could probably refactor to use in a VM. So that's a really good one. Uh, and the Drupal Vagrant project is up there too. Standard URL, so virtual box you'll need, Vagrant you'll need, the base box you'll want to download from, Puppet Labs and uh, Chef. Josh Vagrant is an interesting one. That's a project that um, some of the Ager guys were hacking on back in Munich. Uh, and it's a tool that you can use Drush to start controlling Vagrant. So Vagrant is controlling VirtualBox, and just controlling Vagrant. Turtles all the way down. Um, uh, VWE, uh, I confess I've never used it. Uh, VWE is a tool to build base boxes, and I've seen some really good articles in it, but I've never needed to build a base box myself. I've just taken one of the ones out there and trusted it, because it's from Canonical, so I'm sure it's fine. But if you do want to build them, that's the place to start. And the Vagrant channel is quite active. And there's a surprisingly large number of Drupalers. Uh, like for, for a project that covers all sorts of things, um, I reckon at least 40% of the people in that IRC channel are people who are active in the Drupal community. Uh, and like I said, Vagrant is starting to cover other things. So VMware, ESXi, um, Amazon EC2, the same Puppet and Chef scripts that you use for your Vagrant box, you can actually start rolling out to manage your test stage, your CI, you can manage any environment with them you like. I wouldn't use Vagrant to manage the, um, uh, the, the provisioning of things in production. Uh, Cobbler is a much better tool for that, for managing virtual machines in prod. And um, Satellite is a Red Hat specific tool that again, uh, is designed just to provision a virtual machine from scratch. So, Vagrant <coughs> automates the setup of a local dev environment. Uh, it gives you a setup that's ready to go in a couple of minutes. You don't need to learn anything else to start using Vagrant. 
you can start using it in five minutes' time. If you want to do that without learning anything at all, find one of those open source vagrant setups. So either the, the link that I gave you from this demo or one of the Drupal or project slash vagrant uh, VMs. Type vagrant in it, vagrant up, and you're done. Or if you really want to go advanced, you can create your own chef config, your own puppet config, your own base boxes. I can't come here and not plug my company. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you do want to get in touch about any of this, that's our URL. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I have a blog where I talk a lot about Drupal and tech. And my slides will be going up on SlideShare. You can tweet me. Uh, I can take questions. And whilst I'm taking questions, what I'm going to do is open up a terminal and just get this thing running so you can see exactly what it does. I did start with a live demo on one of these talks um, back in Barcelona. <coughs> and what I discovered is that um, on slow internet, the time it takes to download and get everything running um, yeah, makes it take far too long. So, development. Right, so I have a Vagrant box in there already. Let me wipe it out. <laughs> Great, I have control. And whilst that's going on, does anyone have any questions? Yes? When you're developing local sites, mm -hmm. uh, multiple local sites, how do you deal with that in Vagrant? Do you have multiple VMs or do you set up virtual hosts within one VM? And I spent about nine months working as a consultant where I moved from project to project every week. And so I would start on a new site every single week. So I set up Project Oscar to solve this problem. At the start of the project, on Monday morning, first thing I do, make a new directory, project foo, cd to it, vagrant uh, init Oscar, vagrant up. Bam, I've got a brand new clean installation that has never been configured and never changed. And the main issue with old builds is that I would go in and Project X would tell me, oh, we need uh, a two gig of uh, PHP memory, so I'd change it. And then I'd go back for Project Y the next week, and I'd forget that I'd upped the PHP memory to something stupid, and things that would have broken worked until <coughs> it hit their production. So I used uh, one, basically one site per VM. You can build multiple. Uh, okay, so they went up. Now you'll see it downloading all sorts of stuff. Um, sorry, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to practice. <coughs> mm. The other thing I do if I've got one project which maybe has multiple sites is uh, I tend to put all of the project work in slash SRV. Uh, and so if I've got site A and site B, I've got slash SRV slash site A slash htdocs and slash SRV site B htdocs. And then I just use Apache virtual host, name based virtual hosts to, to run both sites. Any other questions? Yes. I'm just a bit confused. You said uh, creating dev sites and then production sites. What's, mm -hmm. what's the difference there? The main thing is that I wouldn't want to rely on this in prod. Why, why not? It's a really good question, and I would probably need to put some more thought into it to answer that. It, it, I'll, I'll tell you why it used to be the case, um, because VirtualBox is definitely not a production-ready environment, and Oracle say so. Um, yeah, I wouldn't ever run prod on VirtualBox, and if I try and open a VirtualBox GUI um, two or three times a week, it'll kernel panic. So <laughs> I'm not about to use that in prod. And because Vagrant used to be tied to uh, VirtualBox, that meant that it was outright out. Now that you can use it to control ESX, uh, so ESXi and EC2, then no, maybe Vagrant is actually uh, a good <coughs> tool that you could use to manage prod now. Vagrant is just the, the thing that leverages Puppet or Chef into the environment, though. I would still use the same Puppet and Chef scripts, and I would tend to use something like Cobbler or Satellite or... Um, no, Cobbler and Satellite are the two main ones. Where, did, um, where do they fit into the stack? What do they do? Cobbler fits at the very top of a virtualization system. So you think data center virtualization, where you're spinning up hundreds of VMs. Cobbler takes everything from the very um, bare metal uh, and takes instructions so that it tells this host to 
download this ISO, install Red Hat or Ubuntu using these instructions. So Cobbler actually gives you the, um, the operating system underlying it, first of all. Um, Satellite does something similar, but ties in with Red Hat's package management. So it's about enterprise um, virtualization tools. Um, I, I use Vagrant every day, um, mm -hmm. and I've, but I've not used it with Chef and Puppet. Mm -hmm. But on one site that I'm using at the moment, we use a knife script to just so we can quickly provision a server. Okay. And also, you know, if it goes down, it's stuff. Do you know if the, you know they're kind of in the same format? So technically, we could replicate production stage integration, you know, by using mm -hmm. the same Puppet scripts. Uh, well, same model of Chef, the same Chef scripts as we would use for Knife. I'm not sure what knife is. I'm, it's not something I've come across. Uh, okay, it's just it's it's kind of similar to Vagrant. I'm probably not going to describe it very well, but it's just used to provision a service. So you know, mm -hmm. like Vagrant, it go up and install the lamp stack, uh, you know, varnish, right? Um, APC. Okay, no, that sounds really interesting. I've not come across knife, but it sounds um, philosophically like the same thing as Chef. Yeah, and, I mean, it uses Chef Solo, so. Okay, right. Yeah. Then, yeah, absolutely. Chef Solo is actually packaged with Vagrant. So if it works with Chef Solo, then it would work out of the box with Vagrant. Uh, okay. You yeah. might need to tweak your Puppet scripts because depending how they're set up, they might yeah. provide uh, instructions that are specific to the host's for environment or for, for product stage. Yeah. But I'm sure it would be just a couple of tweaks to, to get that into your uh, setup. Okay. Yeah. If you download a box, is there a simple mechanism to interrogate it so that you can understand what they've built into that box? Because you, at the moment, you re, if you go to that that site, mm -hmm. you know you rely upon the description of what's in it. Yeah. Um, basically, think of a box as someone giving you a hard disk. You can open up the hard disk and you can look at it, and you can ls, and you can look through the contents and try and understand it. And there are automated tools that might help you with that. Um, so Puppet, for example, do a tool where if you get an arbitrary server, it can use Factor to try and tell you what the configuration of this server is. Um, F-A-C-T-O-R, I believe, Factor. Uh, and it's part of the Puppet package. And that tells you things like what the host name is, the IP address is, and so on. Um, the keyboard, I think, keyboard. Uh, so that's, that's been 183 seconds. Um, this is why I try not to do that at the start of a, uh, of a demo and then leave everyone waiting for three minutes. Um, so that's installed uh, Apache, Papache, which is a really cool thing um, script that I'm using, Drush, MySQL, and so on. So let's have a look what's in the box. Yeah, um, sorry, Factor will give you like host name and network settings and some basic stuff. There will always, there, or there could always be things tucked away in the box that you're not aware of that Factor won't necessarily discover. So um, there is a certain element of trust in there, and that's why if you absolutely have to have a trusted environment, you need to build your own base box. Uh, okay. Yay! Uh, I've got some cool stuff. I have a Drupal site. Hooray! It worked. Now, I don't know if I've finished this bit of a Avahi. Have any of you heard of Avahi? Yeah, it gives you um, zero conf networking so that. Uh, let me see if this one works. That might work. I've got an Avahi tool that I'm building that every time you add a virtual host to Apache, uh, then it publishes the virtual host name across Avahi so that all of your MacBooks and Windows can pick that up without needing to change a host file, without needing DNS changes. I've got the service discovery bit working, but not the um, uh, MDNS part. So it knows it's there, it just can't get an IP address for it. One of these may or may not work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me try and curl that locally. Right, so it knows of foo.local at least, and as you can see, this <coughs> is a Drupal. Uh, <laughs> this is a Drupal site. <laughs> I tell you what, what I will do is add this to my host file because I haven't finished my Avahi setup. Uh, and I will 
is 192, what's it say, 3310?